My name is Scarlett and I've had one abortion. For me, uh, my abortion was very recent. It happened uh, last November. And at the time I had been dating my current boyfriend for about a year and a half. And um, I had just started a new job and I was just con uh, kind of playing with the idea of going back to school to kind of figure out what it is I really want to be doing. Um, I was really uh, excited for the way that things were going. Um, and uh, suddenly I was having really strange symptoms. Uh, like I was having a lot of cramps, but my every time I checked to see if I had gotten my period, it hadn't come. And I just felt really, really strange. So I just, I decided to take a pregnancy test. Um, I remember when I was going to do it, I was really putting off taking it because I felt really, I had a really bad feeling um, that it wasn't just normal PMS. And as soon as I took the test, I had, I didn't even get a chance to put it on the counter before it was positive. And I was just floored. I was, I just felt my heart sink into my knees. And it, I think it was probably one of the most intense moments of my life. And immediately I was hyperventilating and just scared um, because I've always really had a, a fear of, getting pregnant before I was, I wanted it or wanted to keep the pregnancy. So I was terrified. And the first thing I did was I ran into my room and I called my boyfriend. And I remember when I picked up the phone to talk to him, I couldn't even speak. Uh, I just hyperventilated into the phone. Um, I don't really remember a lot of what was next. I think a lot of just incoherent babbling on my part and uh, him coming to get me. And it was like, I think four in the morning at this point, because uh, I have a habit of staying up at night. And um, we drove and we got a pack of four tests just to be completely sure even though I really already felt like it was true. <clears throat> um, and I took the second test and it came out the same way and we were just both floored. And we just, immediately after, we just went for a walk and to cool off and everything else. And uh, it was just so scary and I think I just couldn't sleep so a couple hours later I waited uh for my mom to be awake and I called my mom and I didn't even have to say anything she already knew um and I had already decided what I was gonna do at that point uh, when I was on the phone with my mom, basically, I just said, Mom, something really serious is going on. And she said, you're pregnant, aren't you? And I said, yeah, I am. And I felt comfortable telling her because she had gotten pregnant with me just out of high school. And she initially planned on an abortion and she got as far as getting to the clinic and sitting in the chair waiting for the procedure and at the last minute she just got up and left because she was so afraid and uh, I felt like I could really trust her with that and she was extremely supportive of me though it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to tell her. As for telling other people I really I I felt too ashamed to really tell many people. Um, I told maybe 
I think a handful of my friends, I think I told maybe three other people. Um, most were very supportive uh, and, you know, backing me up saying, you know, you can do this, you're strong, you're, you're going to get through this no matter what you choose. And of course, there were people who, you know, I thought were going to be there for me and they ended up really just being totally invisible, um, which was really hard. But really, I've kept it under wraps and I really haven't told very many people about it. Making the appointment was really hard for me. Um, I remember that I made a point, an appointment with my general doctor's office and then they described the surgical procedure to me and I got so scared that I just didn't return any of their calls. And I put it off for weeks because I was just so terrified and so scared of of the procedure um and i put it off for i think three more weeks and then i called uh planned parenthood and they eventually got me an appointment at a different hospital and um because i wasn't comfortable with uh they were using a really outdated method at the first place that i went and i didn't feel comfortable with it so uh, I decided to go somewhere else. And um, in between that was just really scary for me. I struggle with anxiety and I, I've always really been like afraid to get a surgery done. So it was just really, really hard for me. And um, I was just really depressed leading up to it because for me, it felt like um, I didn't have the choice to keep it or I didn't have the choice to give it to anybody. I, I'm i very grateful that I, I'm gonna backtrack a little. Um, let me see. Let me see, where can I go? For me, I was just, I was just really nervous because um, and really depressed because I knew there would be no way I could possibly keep it even if I wanted to. So it was just really depressing for me. And um, I mean, uh, getting to the appointment was uh, really terrifying. Um, because it was so recent, there were a lot of COVID uh, mandates in place. So most of the time I was completely alone um, for my ultrasounds, for my exams, uh, waiting for it. I was just completely alone. Um, I remember just being so upset that my boyfriend couldn't come up with me. And I brought a book with me and I sat in their really, really small waiting room alone. And I tried really hard to read the book, but I couldn't read it because tears just kept blurring my vision. I was just, tears were just falling out of my eyes and I just couldn't um, focus at all. And I don't think I've ever felt as alone in my life as I did waiting for it. And Another thing was when I was waiting, uh, what just so happened to be right across from the chair I was sitting in was the room where they performed the surgical abortions. And while I was waiting, uh, a woman was wheeled into there and I could just hear her moaning and it really, really freaked me out and was really, really hard for me to hear. And it just made the whole thing a lot harder for me. Uh, the waiting. Um, then after that, they eventually called me back and they started to, uh, they gave me like an IV and um, they had me take, uh, what is it? I think it's Mifeprestone or something. And they had me put it in my gums and 
I waited, I think, for two hours for it to start working. And then um, eventually it was time for me to go and get the procedure done. And they put me in the room and they asked me if I wanted to hear music. And I said yes. And uh, I got to listen to music, but then I guess they turned it off because it was too stressful for me or something. I really don't remember. Um, I, I do remember though that uh, the procedure was not easy for me. I chose to be under the most heavy duty um, sedative that they could give me. And personally, it didn't work. Um, I was awake and I felt a lot of pain. Um, I felt a lot of pain and it was just really, really stressful for me personally and just really hard on me. And, um, let me see, let me go next. It was. I was just so nervous too. I just couldn't calm down. I couldn't even keep my legs in the stirrups. I was shaking so badly. I was just so nervous. And um, when it was over, I just remember being so warped out from all of the IV drugs that I just, I held my hands out when they were cleaning me up because I thought they were going to hand a baby to me. And then I realized that they weren't. And I put my hands back down and I just felt really alone, really empty. And I remember for some reason feeling so ashamed that I was even there, even though I don't think it's a shameful thing. And I don't, looking back, I don't think it was shameful. I just felt so much shame. And I remember looking at the doctors and just saying, you know, I'm really sorry about this. I'm really sorry that I was nervous. I'm really sorry that I had to be here. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to do this, um, but I like had to do this and telling, like just being so ashamed and afraid. And then afterwards, they just left me in there and I just never felt so empty and alone. And for me personally, I felt like I had lost somebody that I had had with me all my life. And I don't feel this way now, but I felt like I was like slapping God or whoever is up there in the face. And I just felt like I was throwing something away. And I really can't explain it, but that was just how I was feeling. Um, afterwards, they wheeled me out to my boyfriend's car and I just felt totally numb. And I just felt like I was submerged below water. and. Um, it's really difficult to remember the car ride home. I remember trying to describe what happened to me and how I was feeling, but I was really still really, um, just, I was still really feeling the effects of the anesthesia or yeah, the anesthesia. And, um, he brought me my favorite drink and it really sucked because I couldn't even drink it. I was so nauseous. And I just remember getting back to his place and laying in bed and just going right to sleep. The next day, I felt really, really good. I felt free. I felt like my body was mine again because, you know, during the whole pregnancy, I was struggling, feeling like my body didn't belong to me anymore. Like it, I just didn't recognize it. So it felt really good to feel like my body was my own again. And I just felt really at peace 
and really calm and really good about the choice I had made. Um, physically, the recovery wasn't so hard. Um, I just had what felt like period cramps. And um, I think the hardest part for me was uh, I would pass clots sometimes and it would really, um, it would just make me sad. I don't really know why, but it would make me sad when I would see them. And um, I did feel really good at first, but then I think my hormones started to to really uh, drop off and uh, that was really hard. Um, after feeling good, I started feeling really bad and just really depressed. And I felt really hopeless and I, I got to some really, really dark places because I felt a lot of guilt. Um, and I felt like, oh, I could have, I could have given it to somebody that would have been the better thing to do. Looking back, it, it's not, but, but I really struggled with wondering if I made the right choice. And I really struggled with feeling alone because for me personally, I started to grow attached um, to the fetus and I started, I would talk to it and stuff like that. And what was really hard for me was knowing that I was just alone and that there was nothing with me and that it was gone. And that when I touched my stomach, there wouldn't be anything in there. And it was, it was really hard struggling with feeling like my body was mine again. And I liked it, but I also didn't like it. Um, it was just really a really weird combination of feelings that I don't think I've ever experienced before then. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a really dark time recovering from it at first. Um, uh, my relationship was struggling because uh, he had been, my boyfriend had been the rock that I was leaning up against and uh, crashing up against like a wave. And he really kept a lot inside until after it was over. And it, it was, it was tough for both of us, but um, it took a long time, but um I'm finally back to a sense of normalcy. Um, and so is my relationship. And so is he. I think a lot of what played into the guilt and the shame is that I have a lot of conservative family members. I was raised, uh, my parents were divorced. So one of my households was very right wing. The other was very left wing. So I think growing up that way instilled a lot of weird shame in me. Um, and I, you know, I went to church until I think I was 14. Um, so it's like having my childhood in the church really drilled into me that what I was doing was wrong. You know, what I was doing was bad. And I've, I've never personally felt that way. I've always been very pro-choice. And, you know, you see the protesters and you hear them, you know, calling women like you murderers and, you know, you're sinning and you're going to go to hell. And it's like you hear that and like a part of me just like internalized it, even though I didn't believe it. And it made me worry, you know, you know, what if I am murdering? What if I am, even though I don't think I am? It was just really a mind trip um, just caused by growing up a certain way. Thinking about my mom's decision ultimately to keep me instead of getting an abortion, <laughs> that actually really influenced my choice to get one because I think that the circumstances of my birth were less than savory. 
Um, I'm not saying I wish I was never born or anything like that, but I think that my parents weren't ready. And I mean, my mom was just out of high school. She hadn't even thought of what she wanted to do or be yet. Um, she hadn't even hit her 20s yet. And as a child, I suffered for it. Um, I grew up really poor uh, because my parents didn't get a higher education um, or get good jobs. I grew up uh, sometimes wondering, you know, oh, is, is my mom going to come home? Is my dad going to come home? Because they're in their 20s and they're out partying. It was just really, I had a really hard childhood because of it. And it really influenced my choice because I have a very specific set of circumstances that I want the children I do have to be born under. I want to already be settled in my career and be happy with it. I want to live in a place that I like and I want to have a house because I don't want my children to want for anything the way that I had to. Um, and I don't want my children to have parents who possibly could even wish that they were never born because their life could have gone differently. I just couldn't in good conscience bring a child into this world when I'm immature as I am and, you know, barely have a job that I like and haven't even finished school. It just felt really like I had to break a generational trauma and prevent it from happening again. Healing for me and getting to where I am now, I would say most of it uh, was time. I had to have time to grieve. I had to have time to physically heal and mentally heal. And I had to really, really try because I wanted nothing more than to just give up, just draw my, land, draw my line in the sand and just give up. And it took a lot of writing about it in a journal and a lot of slowly telling the people around me who I hadn't told yet and slowly um, doing little things for myself. Like it, it might sound really silly, but one thing that really helped was maybe a month after um, my boyfriend and I took a little vacation and we went to Disneyland and it was just really, really healing to kind of let our inner children out at a time where we had been dealing with so many just totally adult and totally real issues. It was just really freeing to be able to just connect with our inner children. And uh, me and my boyfriend, we were struggling and we were really just blowing up constantly and just bottling things up and then they just would explode. And really what helped was just committing to taking care of each other and just being as loving and gentle as possible with each other and allowing each other to have these hard emotions and work through them together, you know, doing everything together. Um, and, you know, talking to other people about it too. Um, but I think what has really given me a lot of strength is knowing that one day under the right circumstances, I will be able to follow through with this. I will be able to have a family of my own. I will be able to have children of my own, hopefully with my boyfriend and just know having a lot of faith in the future. If I can just, you know, build my life the way I want it, uh, uh, find what it is I want to do, I'll, I'll get that much closer to being able to do 
to have what I wasn't able to have. And it's a really freeing thought to know I can get myself there someday. I think that they should have let me have somebody wait with me because I was terrified. I think no matter what, you should be able to have somebody wait with you because it's a very, for a lot of people, it's really a scary thing to have to do. And I really wish that I wasn't treated so much as a customer, you know? come in, come out, that's it. It was, it felt really transactional at times, uh, which I didn't like. Um, like I was visibly upset a lot and a lot of people would just kind of like walk by and it made me feel really, really alone. Um, I know it's not their job really to comfort me, but I feel like I could have gotten some. Um, I also feel that for the place I went, it's it maybe it's not such a great idea to have the room where the procedure is done, right where people are waiting, and you can hear what's going on inside. I mean, I really wish I didn't hear that because um, it really colored my experience in a bad way. Um, also, not even in the waiting room, I had to wait a lot over the phone. Um, because it seemed like everywhere I called was having like a glitch with their system, which is another reason it took me weeks to be seen. Um, and I really just wish that um, I was given maybe a heavier option, like being fully anesthetized. I think that would have been probably the best choice for me, but it wasn't there. And I really wish, I, I really don't understand why women's health care seems to be so, I want to say, at times barbaric compared to any other field. Because, you know, most people who get a surgery are put fully under. I think it's really strange that for some people you can choose to be awake without anything but like ibuprofen in your system. And even when I was considering the idea of a medical abortion, I asked uh, what influenced my decision was when I asked if I would be given any painkillers because I knew it was going to be painful. They said, oh, you can just take Tylenol for that. And that seemed really weird that they wouldn't give you anything to manage the pain, anything you know stronger than something over the counter. It felt really odd to me. And it just felt made me realize it made me realize that women's health care is really really not as developed as it should be personally uh i feel like getting the abortion was the ultimate act of love that i could have committed for the child it could have been because I feel like I spared them a really hard life. Um, and I feel like I really, how can I phrase it? Um, I feel like I spared them a hard life and I spared them a really difficult upbringing and for a long time, I really felt like I had thrown something in the trash, but I think instead, I really loved, loved the person. It could have been so much that I just couldn't bring them into the world. And I feel that every day that I live my dream and every day that I carve my path into the world will be a love letter to the child that I couldn't have yet. And it just gives me that much more reason to do the things that I want to do. and. 
live life in a really full way and it really and to really just grab onto my aspirations and just hang on to them because it will all be so that I can get closer to having the family that I want to have because that's a really big uh, dream of mine to be a mother.